so in this part of the Bracas chapter, I made a quick render, which wasn't that quick actually, like 1 minute 30, 36 seconds for a really ugly render. And I think it's too much for the low amount of particles he, this character has. But there is a way to fix this by pressing the magic button called Strand Render on the visualization panel on the particle settings. Now if you render with F12, you will see the magic happens actually. Now the shading is a lot better, it really fits to the rest of the shading of, the, of our character, even the parts with no hair. And also renders a lot faster, this might be like 30 seconds or yes, 34 seconds. That's nice. So we got a faster render, a better shading. Let's add a material to it. It's not fraca, it's braca there. Let's add a new material channel. Let's change the color just to, to see it. if it works. Then on the material uh, slider, which I, we select the, the channel of our material. Just the, the call button there is just for pre-visualization, it doesn't have anything to do with the rendering. So what I want to do now is I want to add a texture to this strand. I want to control the color and the alpha of it along the strand. Not an overall change, but uh, only along the strand, each of these strands. So let's add a blend texture for it, type linear. And if we change to the particle preview, you can see that it uh, maps this ugly pink on one side of the of our particles. That's because it's using the original coordinates of it, which we don't want that. We want to map it to strands. So this blend texture will be actually mapped along the strand. So with this option, we could make some really fancy things with the color band. As you can see, when you move that, it updates in real time. It's nice. You can also play with the alpha of it, but our material by default has already alpha. So let's lower that. Yeah, put it back to zero. So you can control the alpha directly with the uh, color band. Enable Z-Transp, of course. There. Now, as you can see, Blender is using the alpha from the color band on the blend texture. And that's fun because we can add another point, for example, on this color band, or we can change the color of it we could add uh, alpha to the tip and uh, to the at, at the bottom as, as well. That's nice because it makes it uh, blend a lot better than if it was alpha 1. That's nice. I also like to add uh, some bright colors to the tip and the bottom, especially to the tip of these uh, strands, because when you render even when this color is transparent, Blender will not render exactly the, the, the tip of it, because it's transparent, of course. But it will render actually the interpolation between the midpoint and the tip. And if we add a bright color to it, it will add some nice, not fall off effect again. But let's render, let's see how it looks. There you can see that the particles have some nice color on the edges, which is the color we added there to the alpha point on the tip. It's a nice effect. I like it.
So with this strand option there are some nice extra settings we can play with, which is the strands panel on the links and pipeline uh, panel. We can enable some really useful settings like for example the blender units option which will change instead of using pixels for rendering like for the size of these uh, of these particles these strands we'll use actually blender units to control the size and that's really nice because if you're uh, making an animation for example and the character and uh, you're not using blender units and the character runs away from the camera uh, the particles will still be one pixel size so that could really look ugly but if you are using blender units then it means that it, the particles will get smaller when they are far away and will get bigger when they are close by close to the camera they are not they don't depend on the pixels it's a little bit slower sometimes not always but uh, it really works for animation but remember, it's a blender unit, so you have to be careful with the size of it. Let's uh, play with the width at the end for some extra fuzziness. And too small. Well, we don't have many particles as well. But luckily we can change the size of the particle of each particle at the start of it or at the end which is nice you can make really thick when they start and really thin when they end so you can play with the shape of it now it's a little bit more thick If you zoom in, you can see the thickness of the particles there. You can make it even bigger or also you can add more particles actually because we don't, don't have many here and we, sh we really need, we should add a, a few more. Let's try rendering now. Yeah, better. Oh, but on the vertex group I added on the first part of this chapter, uh, yeah, I got a, another weight on the on the eyebrows of this character because on the real one, the one I I made the first time, I added another particle system to to the eyebrows especially for the eyebrows so the eyebrows hairs and the body hair were a different particle system to have more control over it I wanted to give some really evil eyebrows to it well increasing the, the amount of particles helps you can still th see the thickness of these particles there. I should really comb the hair on the neck. Looks a bit weird. But let's keep moving. Let's add some color to these uh, particles. Uh, for example, some really nice texture, which is the magic texture it's pretty nice actually it looks a little bit ugly from the <laughs> with the default settings but if you take it a little bit it could look very nice or you can even make like a dot texture or sort of dots like that So now if you render uh, using Orco, so let's increase the size, so 
we have a smaller particle now let's see <laughs> funky I looks a bit flat so I could help a little bit with the specular right of it to give more volume to these particles better a good thing about the using particles and textures on these particles is that you have some extra settings to play with it's a there is a new button when you, in your material you're using for the particles which is called PATTR which is particle attributes I mean if you click there you it will switch the buttons to some extra settings like uh, density length size you can control all these things with a texture that's nice I don't know if it's going to do much now because we are using uh, because the the magic texture it, uh, the colors are not really uh, really contrast but if you're using a black and white image you can control the density of these uh, particles and the length of it or the clump or the kinkness or the life all with the texture it's very nice even an animated texture some really crazy things you can do with it, with it. funky braca I'm not sure I will leave it like this I will probably take it a little bit more so I was I was saying that uh, I also used some extra particle settings not on you don't have to leave only with one it will be really boring so you can add more even copy the settings from the other particle system because they are all data blocks data blocks so you can share it you can append you can link it's awesome so that's pretty much it hope you enjoyed